Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Snowblind, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, I'm writing to you about my husband, Herbert Morris since I know he himself would never deign to ask anyone for help, particularly when it concerns a woman. But he is in danger. I can tell from his letters and the way he acts when he does. Herbert is a doctor. He can't leave his practice. And so he is alone down there in the city, just as I am alone up here in the mountains. Oh! Just keep going down and these involved. Oh! You startled me. Hello, Hans. What is it? What? Oh, es gibt kein... Uh... <laughs> There are no longer bears in this wood. Oh, oh. You see, I have been studying. I have. No, no, no. Not what I say. I meant, uh, what is it? Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, the letter. It's ah. nothing. It's nothing, Hans. Ah. It is snowing outside. Good powder. Oh, yes, I noticed it. Supper time. I can practice my Christie in the morning, can't I? You'll help me with it, won't you? Before any of the others, Hans. Of course, Mrs. Morris. A ski instructor is only to oblige. Oh, Hans. What is it? You won't tell me? Oh, well, it's just, uh, well, it's a uh, note for supplies I need up at the cabin. Oh, Hans, wait. I'll be in in a moment to die. He's in down to the diamond. Yes, I know. There are other women, that's what you said, isn't it? Yeah. But I'll be just a moment, Hans. Ich, nein. Well, uh, No, no, stop it. it, stop it. It's a dead language, like the people. Why bother? Oh, don't say that, Hans. You'll wait for me, won't you? Whatever the lady says. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> How else could I do? So, hurry to order the bacon. There is dancing to be done. <laughs> hurry! Mr. Valentine, my husband is in danger from a woman. Her name is Dorothy Graham, and I believe she is at the Hotel Continental. I can be reached at our winter cabin several miles north of Sun Mountain Lodge. Sincerely, Stella Morris. <laughs> Miss Graham checked out half an hour ago. Took all her baggage. I'm as sorry as you are. She was nice to hand her key to. All right, Wolf. She left half an hour ago, and we already found out Dr. Morris left for Sun Mountain last night, but... Wait a minute. Did she have any heavy baggage? I mean, like skis, maybe? Nope. But she asked me for a railroad schedule in the name of a good sporting goods store. That help you any? Yeah. How about it, Angel? Shall we join the Broken Legs? Sun Mountain? Uh Uh-huh. In fact, if we make it fast, we might even catch the same ski special she does. Want to bet? Miss Dorothy Graham, Miss Graham, Miss Dorothy Graham, Miss Dorothy Graham. My... Uh, Oh, Porter, Porter, that's me. Uh, Telegram, Miss Graham, delivered to the train at the station. Oh. Oh, of course. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. Well, pardon me. May I? Chair's empty. Ah, yeah. Well, I I guess everybody's a little friendly, headed for a vacation and all. I suppose so. Yeah. Uh, This is my first trip this year. You pretty good on the sticks? I don't ski. Uh, Skate? No. (laughs) Well, then what are you doing on the train? Would you please... Oh, Oh, look, excuse me. You, you got a wire. I, if you haven't had a chance to read it, I didn't notice. Oh, would so. you please give me a match? That's all. Hmm? Oh, sure. There you are. Thank you. Hey, you're burning your telegram. Yes. Yeah. I like fires and ashtrays, don't you? Now, if you'll excuse me, I, I think I'll get some sleep. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, Brooksy burned the telegram without looking at it. I wonder who she thought it was from. I don't know. Particularly since it was me. What? Sure, that's the wire I sent her, a fake one from her hotel. Just so it'd be easy to find her here in this crowd. Well, while you were in the club car, I took a simpler way. I asked the porter which was Dorothy Graham's compartment. You what? And I looked through her handbag, George. She only has a one-way ticket to Sun Mountain, a lot of sleeping tablets, and a gun. <sighs> Mrs. Morris, we came up here because you said your husband's in danger. We didn't come up here to ski. Please, Mr. Valentine. Please, not now. But when will you talk about it? Ever since you met us at the station, you've been... There's so little time with the good snow. It'll be storming again later on. And you do enjoy it, don't you? Oh, yeah, sure, of course we do. But I also like to know what's going on. Why'd your husband come up here unexpectedly? Why did Dorothy Graham? Why'd she carry a gun? What's it all about? Well, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. The gun or about her. Not now. You said she took a room back at the lodge. Well, her bit's miles from here. He stayed up at our cabin. Next today. one. Where's the next one? Now, oh. all day it doesn't take to climb up here. Oh, there, that's you, Miss Brooks. I haven't got my wind yet. The lessons will help you. To fall down. Oh, come, Miss Brooks. Bend your knees this time. Go huh? ahead. Go to it, Angel. Let's see you fall on something besides your face. <laughs> oh, here goes nothing. Now, that's it. Lean. Lean. No. Now, swing your arm, your shoulder. Like now, swing it. Yes, yeah, it's all a lot of fun, down. isn't it, Miss Morris? Mr. Valentine, I will tell you but not in front of her. It's all right, Mrs. Morris. Show her how it's done. There's not all day. It's getting colder. Only the skis. Keep them together. Together. Swing now. That's it. All right, Hans. Watch me, Hans. Hey, she's not bad. Must have been practicing a lot. Yeah. But you, Mr. Valentine, you do not need lessons. Neither do you. <laughs> Why not, Mr. Valentine? What else is to life except mountains and snow... And women. Well, you left out a dog and a fire. Now, look, Hans. You know Mrs. Morris pretty well. You've been with us ever since we got off the train. Do you know her husband? The doctor? Yeah. Well, uh, what's he like? Well, American. I don't know. It's just this morning I meet him. I drive to their cabin for coffee. I, I brought her back to meet you, her friends. He's, um, well, he drives a new red convertible. Is that bad? Expensive. It is her money. Oh, I see. Of course, the man is a doctor. He no, is no, a, I get the a... idea. You don't like him? No, why should you say that? He's nothing one way or the other. Yeah, I understand. Ski instructors don't get so much dough, Mr. So... Valentine. <laughs> Under my arm. I called. Let's go inside. Oh, ouch. Oh, I was making a turn. Neither do I, Mrs. What? Yes, your husband. It was Hans, right? Worried, you mean? It's Fulton. I did. All right, all right. Here, keep the towel on. I wasn't just trying to stop you from talking to He's her. outside now with Miss Brooks, so forget it. All right, let's have it, Mrs. Morris. I don't like divorce cases. But that's what this is, isn't it? Well, I... I wrote you that my husband... Oh, sure, that Herbert was in danger from a blonde, and I followed her, and she's a weirdy, all right. But you're no more worried about him or about her than the price of eggs in Sweden. Mr. Valentine. The only thing that worries you is your boyfriend. The way you watch that Austrian ski boy out there is enough to... I beg your pardon, Mr. Valentine. I love Hans very much. Okay, I beg yours. Only let's be honest about it. Herbert has been, well, stuffy about giving me my freedom, that's all. When a friend in the city, his nurse, when she wrote me that Herbert had brought this Graham woman to town, I've been visiting her at her hotel down uh -huh. there. All you had to do was hire somebody like me and trade the doctor for a... Well, never mind. First impression. Oh, but when you get to know Hans, it's just that he's been through so much in his own country. And he's sensitive and proud. And ambitious? Mr. Valentine, I'm sorry I misled you. But I didn't expect everyone to come galloping after us to the mountain. Oh, Oh, it's you. Give kind there, and these involved. Oh, darling, I'm much better now. I thought you were hurt. Yeah, yeah, the bear, he is slow, huh? But the road is always bad, dangerous. And now there's more... My ankle's outside. only a little swollen, don't you think? Oh, Liebchen, how shall we then dance? 
You should have a bandage. I will go bring it myself. A little tape on No, I'll never mind. Where do you keep your first aid kit? My cabin, just out there beyond the Skeeto. Why? Give me your keys. I need some fresh air. Come on, sister. What's the big idea, Blondie? You've got a rotten aim, but... No, no, let me go. I didn't mean to hit you. I mean, I didn't, did I? I, I heard the key step the door. I'm sorry. Yeah. Maybe you thought it was somebody else, huh? But you've been sitting here all keyed up, waiting for the door to open. Yes. Yes, that Just was Just like it. you were keyed up on the train, cried all the way up here. Only bought a one-way ticket. Well, there's only one guy you could have come up here to murder in Hans' cabin. Mr. Valentine! Mr. Valentine, what's happened? What's happened up... Dorothy? Oh, Hans. What are you... Where did you... Dorothy? Yeah, Buster. Stand there with your mouth open. You don't know how lucky you are to be able to open it. What? No, no, please, Mr. Valentine. It has been years I... She is my wife. No, no, no. I have not known she is. Please. You need time to think of answers. No, please. There is a road. A spare cabin to here. Beautiful new car. Dr. Morris. I can sheriff. His car accident into the canyon. It is dead. <laughs> George Valentine in just a moment. Several weeks, there will probably be... What's the big trek all about snow country? But how will your... Trust Climate Tailored. It gets the best out of your car drive. That's because Chevrolet Supreme is specially tailored to the west, different altitude and temperature zones. It's tailored also to the season. So try a tank full of this Climate Tailored gasoline tomorrow. Right away, you'll notice how much better your car performs. Faster starts, smoother pickup in traffic, sting free power on hills. In fact, you can't buy a better gasoline for today's high compression engines. Ask for premium quality Chevron Supreme at independent Chevron gas stations and at standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You're hired by a wealthy married woman who has a sentimental eye on a handsome ski instructor. A married ski instructor at that. Yes, it's a quadrangle. Or rather, it was until Dr. Morris crashed to his death while driving down the dangerous road from the cabin to the lodge. So, when the sheriff asks you all to meet him at the Morris cabin, you think it best for you to do the driving up that dangerous road. And when you arrive at the cabin, you wish the sheriff would hurry up with his investigation. Hello? Yes, we're all up here at the Morris cabin, Sheriff, but... Well, I just hoped you'd be here, too, that's all. Um, no, no, I, I just want to know more about the accident, that's all. So does his wife. No, Sheriff, there's no reason I can tell you yet for wanting you here fast, but... Well, it's just the weather, I guess. Sure. We're okay. Valentine. He's still down there in the canyon where the car hit. He phoned from the ranger station. Uh, have they reached his body? Yes. Was there anything unusual about the accident? No. Hey, Mr. Valentine, why do you act the way you do? Is Hans starting a fire? That storm's getting worse. Yes. And Miss Brooks has gone upstairs with... with Dorothy. You don't care much that your husband died, do you? Well, I didn't love him, if that's what you mean. Why wouldn't he give you a divorce? Well, Herbie didn't really get stubborn about it until... Until you met Hans. Hans is difficult to understand, to appreciate. I'm not sure a woman, sure. Well, I'm not. Sure a woman, sure. Well, I'm not. Sure a woman, sure. Well, I'm not. So how's this for size? Your husband dug around in Hans' past until he dug up a wife, Dorothy, that Hans had deserted. Of course, Herbert didn't tell you about it. He wanted to bring her up there and let the situation explode itself. Well, it almost did. Dorothy decided to take matters into her own hands and kill the darling boy. That's what she thinks of him. Oh, Mr. Valentine, he's... 
He's told me about her. She's not normal. She's unbalanced. Yeah. I wonder what made her that way. It's a tragic situation. Their, their marriage isn't even legal. Their marriage? Oh, no. Not that, too. Oh, what do you mean? I mean, it's all just too neat. Dorothy's no real stumbling block by herself, is she? Dr. Morris, he was the only real obstacle. Well, lady, I never knew anyone to die so conveniently. By accident. What else did the sheriff tell you? You see, you two can't help thinking. Was it really an accident? Or was Herbert really murdered? Well, Mr. Valentine, I was just trying to persuade your lovely assistant... Oh, to... yeah, sure. Somebody dies, so it's a great time to dance. Where's Dorothy? Upstairs, I suppose. She's all right, George. <laughs> Long faces for the dead. Black pretense around the arm. Sentimentality, isn't it? Hmm. In this household, maybe you're right, Buster. I talked to the sheriff on the phone. What did he say? Quick on the draw. What's the matter? Are you nervous? Well, why not? A man is on top of the world. A split second of ice, and he has slipped into the abyss. <laughs> Even at the wheel of a fine convertible, a man can... Oh, Skipper, can... I know the doctor was driving alone, if that's what you're trying to remind me of. I go around in circles myself. My wife appearing from all these years. The accident and your unpleasant remark. Yeah, be sure to remind me of the word accident. But if you were driving alone on a dangerous road, and the accident would be easier if someone had tinkered with your car earlier. George. What is that now, what you call a shot in the dark? No, an unpleasant remark, that's all. Hans, it keeps bothering me how much you envy that man is convertible. You can't seem to forget it. All of the things Stella Morris's money would give to a man. Hans, you were up here earlier this morning. You said so. Both you and Mrs. Morris would have had a chance. No, Angel, to... she wouldn't have known so how. So you, you shoot at me. Because I am poor, huh? Because you cannot understand the simple envy of people who are persecuted. I'm not interested in what makes you tick, Buster. Now, the reason I'm even more anxious than ever now to hear the sheriff's final report on that car is because I've been as insulting to you as I know how to be. And yet you haven't once offered to do the normal thing, to knock off my block. Then, of course, I shall oblige. <laughs> Saved by the bell. Oh, stop it. Stop it, please, both of you. Dorothy, you shouldn't uh, have come. I'm feeling much better now, Miss Brooks. Ready to join the party, huh? No. No, I'd like to see my husband alone, that's all. Whatever you wish. Oh, no, you don't. You've already tried once. To... Yes, I came up here to kill him. But I have no gun now. That's right. <laughs> I am strange, aren't I? Huh? Can you imagine me wanting to kill you? Hallo, umsteigen. No, it's the same me. <laughs> Isn't he wonderful, Miss Brooks? Okay, Isn't okay, he... go ahead. We'll be back in a few minutes. George. Come on, I can't stand it. How that guy can wind women around his little but finger. But she's liable to try. Liable to kiss him, sure. What'd she say upstairs, anything? Mm, just what we thought. He deserted her a couple of years ago after he got into this country by being her husband. But she's so mixed up. George, it's her I'm worried about. She's no threat to him anymore. Why would he touch her? George, maybe he could be deported if they're married. That to... middle-aged sucker up there and only follow after him. No, Angel, when the doctor died, it left nobody to interfere with Casanova's march to success. Except us, and we might be wrong. Uh, come on out here. What I'm afraid of, Angel, is we won't ever know whether we're right or wrong. Ooh, brother, it's cold. Mm. Come on, stay under the eaves. The garage is out in back. You won't find any evidence. Except for the sheriff. It's my only chance. Before this snow covers everything up. Uh, hey, look out now. Let me take your arm. Ground's frozen. At least maybe I can get that guy nervous enough to... George, what's the matter? Hey, what's this stuff on your jacket? On the inside of your arm here. What? Oh, I couldn't have rubbed against anything. Not there. Somebody else took your arm like this. Who was it? But I don't... Well, Dorothy did for a moment when she came downstairs just now to steady you. Dorothy, sure, sure. And she wanted to talk to him alone about it. Oh, brother, am I a sucker? Come on back to the house fast. But, George, what is it? Smear of grease, Angel. Axle grease. And it came off a car. Mr. Valentine. Where is she? Here, George, the... here. Dorothy. Oh, Mr. Valentine, Dorothy. I, I was just going to call you. We were talking, and she seemed to start 
fall asleep. Dorothy, can you hear me? Uh, it's those pills she takes. She must have taken all of them. Yeah, yeah, she tried to kill herself and she was alone. Mrs. Morris! Uh, Mrs. Morris! Yes, what is it? She's not quite asleep yet, George. Get some baking soda, will you? Whatever you do, make it fast. I'll get it. That's it, Dorothy. Uh, can you walk now? Uh, I'm hey, holding you. Here's the keys to my car. As soon as you can, get her wrapped up in a blanket and down to the lodge as fast as you can drive. Right. Only leave the windows open. But that the road, it's worse all the time, even with chains. She's got a license, Buster. Only I might be a little careful, Angel. Oh, don't worry, George. Oh, Mr. Valentine, it is ridiculous. We should go with them. They can do better than we can. Besides, you're not leaving this room, not yet. Now, let's see. A glass, maybe. How did you give her those pills? In whiskey? I don't know what you're talking about. She tried to murder me. She's upset. She tried to kill herself. Yeah, yeah. This glass might do it. Uh huh. That's number one. Number what? Evidence. Things you show to a jury just in case she can't testify or doesn't know herself what happened. Oh, no. Mr. Valentine. Really? Oh, yeah, sure. I'm way out on a limb, Buster. But I'm building a ladder fast. Now, let's see. No coat, no purse. Oh, no, you don't. I'll pick that up. Uh huh. Yeah, here we are. Handkerchief covered with grease. Man's handkerchief. Yours? Give me that. I said stand still, Buster. You can't give a gun an argument. Sure. Your initials. A guy tapers with a car, he gets a little greasy. Dorothy got this down below, didn't she? In your cabin near the lodge. Wonder what else she stumbled into. I might have had this before. What? Identification card. You were in the Luftwaffe, huh? What's this long word? Machine is something. Mr. Valentine, this... This is what you call circumstantial, is it not? I... Oh, there they go. In the car. Yeah. Let's see what... Pliers. I... Well, now, don't get so... No, I, I, I use those on ski binding. Or maybe this is the type that comes out of the toolbox of a red convertible. Oh, stop it! Stop it! Mr. Valentine, you are so ready to accuse me. So ready to invent what, what a crazy woman's story would have been. Yes. Yes, now you are watching me now, huh? You are... Look, you see... Oh, let go of that gun. Let go. I... <laughs> so, there, my suspicious friend. Now you are looking at a gun. Thank you, Stella. Well, I... I didn't mean to. I just opened the door... They didn't need me to go with them, and I, I wanted to... Now, Liebchen, forgive me. Perhaps you will join me sometime. What? Of course, I am leaving. Your own sedan is still in the garage. How could I stay in a country with such a suspicious man? Hans, I've been listening. There isn't any real evidence against you. Nothing to prove you caused the accident. Nothing except me. I know what police can make people say to confess, whether it's true or not. Well, I won't be caught to find out there is no one who can catch me alive to accuse me of things I don't do. Hans, Get Hans. your hands off me. If I run, it doesn't make me guilty. It makes me free, that's all. Free to get the things I want. Well, Mrs. Morris, there goes your ski boy. I know him, Mr. Valentine. You can't catch him. He won't be caught. Don't be angry at it's better this way. Yeah? Well, I'll just get on the phone. No, please, you can't. What? The phone. You can't. I was talking on the phone when the storm put it out of order. Miss Brooks will reach the lodge, all right. But by then, no one will be able to get back here. But Hans could get out. It would take a day for the snow plows to reach us. He could be in Mexico in a day. He could... Hey, wait a minute. Who are you talking to on the phone? The sheriff. The sheriff? A minute ago, I... I told you the truth. All the evidence said it was definitely an accident. An accident? The sheriff was just as suspicious as you were. But he says there's no question about it. Herbert just skidded on one of those corners and went over. That was all it was. Oh, now, wait a minute. You've been wrong all along, Mr. Valentine, about that accident. Right. That's Hans. Come on! <laughs> He's dead, all right. There was no other way out for him. He would have been caught. I see what you mean. I remember how your husband was on his way to you. Your bad ankle. He was a doctor. He was considerate. 
I would have been warmer, more comfortable if, if he'd brought my car. The sedan. Yeah. Which left nothing here in the garage for Hans to escape in, but the car he himself fixed as a death trap. A brand new red convertible. Talk about irony, George. Dr. Morris unexpectedly took his wife's sedan, not his convertible. He had an accident, pure and simple. Yeah, but Hans never imagined that. He fixed up the convertible. The dock crashed in a canyon, so Hans took it for granted his plan had worked. Huh. Dorothy, any better? Mm-hmm. No, she's been telling me a little more about Hans, his background. Huh? There were lots of women he stepped over, I guess. Well... I won't say women are suckers. George, he was good-looking. I can see how it happened. Uh, maybe. But, George, the way he skied. So gracefully, so beautiful. Well, what do you think I've been doing all afternoon? All I said is I could see how it happened. Uh, George, your ankle, oh. a plaster cast. But you were just on a bunny slope. A child couldn't get hurt. How did you... How did this happen? I'm lucky you couldn't see that. One of the worst night driving hazards, especially in wintry weather, is the one-eyed car. And you probably don't think highly of that car's owner. But when were the lights on your own car last checked? For your own safety, friend, make it a point to get your car lights checked at regular intervals. At standard stations and at independent Chevron gas stations, a light check is one of their many protective services. And it's a speedy service, so why not play safe and have it done tomorrow? While you're there... Ask them to inspect your windshield wiper, both the arm and the blade. If the arm is faulty, they can replace it quickly, so you won't have to risk its failing when you need it most. And remember, in stormy weather, a worn wiper blade is almost as bad as none at all. They sound like small items, lights and windshield wipers, but they're very important to your personal safety. And they're part of the protective service offered to you at independent Chevron gas stations and at standard stations, where they say... And mean, we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Virginia Gregg appeared as Brooksy. Larry Dobkin was heard as Hans, Loreen Tuttle as Stella, Gene Bates as Dorothy, and Joe Duvall as the clerk. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Music